All right, so the goal for this video is to take these old door panels that I have for my car that have been spray painted purple for some reason by one of the previous owners. So I'm gonna take these ones, um, trim them to fit with the roll cage in the car, and then uh, rewrap them in a nice fabric. And at the end, we'll have a door panel that's trimmed up to fit around the roll cage in the car, as well as all new fabric on here to match the interior. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the old twill fabric that's on here. So this is just, you know, installed from the factory. They just put kind of like a twill contrasting fabric piece over here. As you can see, it's kind of lifted off over time and we're gonna to need to peel this away so that way we can put the new fabric in its place. Um, comes off pretty easy. There we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is remove the speaker grill. So I just flip it over on the opposite side over here. Now I'm going to take the door panel and install it on the car. So we can test fit and see where we need to trim it. I can just leave it loose like that. Now as you can see if I try and shut the door, the door panel actually hits the uh, door bars right there on the cage. So I'm going to need to trim the door panel up like that so that way when I close it, it can fit over the cage. So the first cut I'm going to make is down here in order to take away this little corner of the door panel. That way I can get the uh, door to close a little bit closer and it's going to be easier to trace my uh, roll cage line uh, on the door panel. For all my cutting, I'm going to be using an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. This is probably just my favorite cutting tool in general, which is why I'm using it, but just use whatever you feel comfortable with. Now that that's trimmed, I can close my door and get a better view for where I'm going to need to uh, trim my door panel. So the way I'm going to get the line for where I need to cut is I'm going to take my paint marker over here and just, you know, run it along the top of the door bar and then run it against the door panel. As you can see, here's the line that I made with the uh, red paint marker. Before I move on to cutting it, I'm just gonna check over the line to make sure it's exactly where I want it to be, as well as finish off the uh, line all the way over to the edge, as well as go over here. And once I've done that, it'll be time to cut the panel. So I've checked over my red line, made some little corrections, it's looking pretty good. What I'm doing is a safety measure, is taking my compass over here, measured to be a half inch larger, and I ran it across all of my uh, red lines. So I'm going to initially trim this lower panel at this lower mark right here and then test fit it just to make sure I'm not taking off too much material at once. There we go. So here's a test fit with it. I've compared it with the other side. It still needs to go up, you know, exactly where the red line is basically. So I'll take it out and then cut it again. Here it is mocked up in the car for the last time now. Everything looking exactly how I want it to look. So I'm gonna move on to wrapping it. Before wrapping, I need to prep the surface. So I'm just gonna spray it with some uh, degreaser right now. It's important to get all these cracks right here. I also need to get under this trim piece over here. Following up to degreasing, I'm going to just scuff up the entire panel with 80 grit. This is just a good thing to do to help um, adhesion between the fabric that you're putting on and then uh, this base door panel. However, if we remember over here, this actually had fabric glued onto it from the factory and you can tell this is basically like the prep that's on here, which is very similar to the outside. So I don't think it's really a big deal if you don't scuff it up. However, it is a good idea. Following up to the sandpaper, I'm just going to wipe the entire panel down with acetone. That's going to help remove a little bit of this paint that's over here and just overall clean it up and make sure it's all prepped before uh, spraying the adhesive. You can see paint being removed. Seeing that the next step in this process is going to be about gluing the fabric down onto the panel, I'm going to talk about the different types of glues out there. The first one is this contact cement by DAP. Um, this is what a lot of upholstery shops use. Uh, this specific one is meant to be brushed onto the fabric, which that doesn't work with the fabric that I'm using, hence why I've gone with the spray. 
adhesive over here on the side. DAP also makes a top and trim contact cement, which is meant to be run through a spray gun. That's what a lot of upholstery shops use as well. That one's a little bit harder to find in stores, which is why I went with this. I also called DAP up. And the only difference between this contact cement and the top and trim contact cement is that this is supposed to be brushed on and the other one is supposed to be sprayed on. Otherwise, they have the same heat properties, adhesive properties, um, and rubber compound in them. So because I can't brush this on and the spray version of this is honestly just a little bit too much work, plus it's really hard to get, I've gone with the 3M High Strength uh, 90 contact adhesive. The number 90 is supposedly better than the 77, which a lot of people tend to use. And that's because this is a lot more heat resistant as it says on the can. So that obviously helps out with car interiors just because when you leave your car out on a summer day, you know, it easily gets well over hundred degrees. All right, that covers going over the adhesive. So the fabric that I'm gonna be using on the outside portion of the door panel is gonna be this polyester velour. This looks very similar to suede, so it does match my D&D uh, &D suede steering wheel in there. However, I find it much softer as well as cheaper, so this is what I'm gonna use. Now before I spray the adhesive on the back side, I'm just gonna make sure that this grain matches up to the panel. So I want everything to look nice when I brush it down, and then if you brush it up, that's when it goes against the grain. So I'm just gonna remember that orientation before I apply the adhesive, so that way when I go to put it on the panel, um, the grain goes downwards. So I'm gonna do the first layer of spray adhesive. I'm now gonna wait for this coat to get tacky and then I'll apply the second one. I found that two layers of the spray adhesive is usually pretty good. So once this gets tacky, we'll lay up the fabric and finally lay it down. Here we are laying down the fabric. It definitely helps having someone help you with it, and that way they can hold the fabric up while you spread it across the surface. Basically just try and lay it down as smooth as possible the first time, making sure not to have any wrinkles. Of course, trim the fabric as you need to. I'll worry about the edges later. So I have the general thing laid, as well as all the edges cut and pushed in with the, um, with the little window net tool that I have. So now what I gotta do is do all the like super crazy edge stuff. For this top edge here, I first removed the masking tape protecting the trim, and then I trimmed the fabric down with a razor, making sure to leave extra material on the edge. And then using a credit card, I tucked the fabric under the trim, which resulted in a super clean edge. For the rest of the edges, I trimmed the excess material off, then glued the end of the fabric to the back side of the panel. I applied more spray adhesive whenever needed. You can also use a hot glue gun or a staple gun to help hold down the fabric onto the back side of the panel. So there's a nice little bottom edge, top edge is nice. I've done every other edge except for this edge right here. This edge gets um, covered by the dash when the door is closed, so really it's only visible when the door is open. As you can see, I cut out this section right here. This material that I'm using right here really isn't that stretchy. So this section, I'm actually going to cut a different piece of fabric and then put that in right here and line it up perfectly. So in the end, I'll get something like this where it's all cut out and then new pieces laid on top. Um, that way, the majority of this is all straight and no wrinkles uh, compared to something like this where it's a complete mess. Okay, so I have this spare piece of fabric over here that I'm going to section in. I have it kept in place with these clothespins. And what I can do is just run my razor along the edge of wherever I want it to be cut. And then I can remove the excess off of this top layer as well as remove the extra over here. And then I'll apply adhesive and then this will line up perfectly um, along the edge that this one stops. Okay, so I have it trimmed up now, so it lines up with the other edge of the fabric. Looks much better than having all the wrinkles everywhere. And remember, this section isn't even visible anyways when the door is closed. So now I'm gonna do section by section, lifting it up and spraying adhesive. Do you, do you see what's wrong here? You, can you guess that I, but I laid that one upside down. Oh God. So dumb. So when redoing it, there's like a little bit of gaps now. So that's kind of bad. There's a little bit of glue over spray too. This isn't gonna be seen. So I'm not really stressing over it since I've already redone it now for the second time. So I'm kind of just gonna have to live with it right now. But anyways, this section is done now so I can move on to doing the center. Since it's time to do the center section, which I'm going to be doing in a crushed velvet, I have masked off all of the uh, polyester velour on the outside. 
and now I can uh, spray my spray adhesive here. And I'm specifically using this fabric, not only because it matches the interior paint of the car, but because it is super stretchy. As you can see by the little piece of the polyester velour, this thing doesn't stretch at all. So every time I tried applying it to the inside, it just couldn't do all the curves and there was just way too many wrinkles everywhere. So now what I did was I just did three coats on the actual uh, base door panel and I did no coats on the um, cloth itself. And that just made it a lot easier to handle because before, as soon as I pushed down on any part of it, I would not be able to lift up the fabric because it would just pull off um, all the adhesive and become a mess. So this made it a lot easier to stretch and um, apply over everything, which was nice. So I'm just pulling the tape off. That way I can uh, fully push the fabric into the edge without the tape being in between it. I have my razor blade now. I'll run it along the edge and just cut off the excess and you know, tuck it in. Now that I have this, the next thing I'm gonna do is make all of my cutouts. So there are, actually this one doesn't have as many. So there's one pocket right here, right? Which needs to be cut out. And there's a pocket right here, which needs to be cut out. So you can tell that's the pocket right there and that's the pocket and these will need to be uh, folded under two and wrapped around. So what I'll do is I'll just hit it with the spray adhesive right here. That way I can coat the bottom of this fabric with the spray adhesive as well as the surrounding area right here, which is where, which is where it's gonna be glued to. You can see the fabric stays on the bottom. Flip it over now. You can see a nice crisp line over here for the door handle. I'll repeat that process with this area. There you go, now my second pocket is done down here. The only other edge left to do is this extra. So I'll just spray adhesive on the back side and then glue that down. Give another last roll around the edges. And just like that, our panel is now complete. Slide that on like so. There's still one OEM push clip over here. So that one stays in place. Up front over here, there's actually a screw that goes in and holds this front piece in. And yeah, overall it looks pretty good. It matches the cage really nice. I also run a D&D Performance Interior suede steering wheel. So the polyester velour on here matches the suede really nice. The only thing left to do with this door panel is to get the remaining trim pieces off of someone. So, you know, there's like this little pocket right here. There's another trim around the handle. Um, then I need to get the OEM screw up front with a little cap over it. As far as the door goes, this is all going to be painted purple, the same color as the cage. So it should look pretty good. Also, the reason that I'm using the stock panel and trimming it to fit rather than just making an aluminum uh, door plate to cover all this is because a series of drifting that I want to compete in requires that you have the uh, OEM door panels. I could make a separate like aluminum panel down here, but I really need to use the pockets and the doors to store stuff, like a little registration over here, because the car has no center console or glove box or anything, so really this is the only storage I have inside the car. But once this inside panel of the door is painted purple to match the interior and roll cage, uh, then overall I think it should look really clean. And of course the dash too is all going to get rewrapped in uh, this nice black matching velour, so hopefully once everything is together it'll all match and look nice. Heads up, the dash isn't supported right now, so that's why it's sagging, otherwise it's perfectly level. But anyways, that's how that passenger door panel looks with the roll cage. And there's the driver's side. Alright, that concludes this video. I hope that helped you out and gave you some ideas maybe to use on your own build. Um, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>